Over the years, many video games have come and gone. Some singing songs of their success, and others lamenting over their downfall. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep has a troubling path ahead of itself. Hello everyone, my name's the Casa Puppy, and let's get the show on the road. Being one of the largest action JRPGs, Kingdom Hearts has amassed itself a huge following because of its quirky characters and endearing stories of the heart. But among the various good titles, there are also a few titles that don't quite live up to the name. Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, sadly, is one of those titles. Being set nine years before the events of Kingdom Hearts 1, Birth by Sleep focuses mainly on three main characters, Terra, Ventus, and Aqua. Each of our protagonists wields a keyblade and study how to master it under their teacher, Master Ericus. The story begins with Terra and Aqua, about to take a test called the Mark of Mastery. Becoming a master is what the three strive for, and Ventus, being far too young to take the test, stands aside and watches as his friends take their steps towards mastery. However, an incident occurs during the test and it reveals the true nature of Aqua and Terra. Aqua, having proved herself during the test, is granted the title of master. Terra, on the other hand, showed signs of weakness towards his inner darkness and was denied, and advised to try again in the future. Shocked, Terra begins to doubt himself and question where his darkness comes from, leading to a divide between him and Aqua. Soon after the test, Ericus is contacted by his old friend, Master Yen Sid, who warns him of a new threat that has begun to appear across the world, known as the Unversed. He promptly addresses the threat and sends Terra and Aqua out to deal with the threat immediately, and ushers Terra to use this opportunity to prove to him that he was worthy of the title of Master. Terra sets out at once, wanting to prove his worth as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Ventus having not been called to the emergency meeting, is found in his quarters worrying over the results of the trial that had recently happened. But before he could collect his thoughts, he's met with a masked boy who warns him that if he lets Terra go, there'd be a chance he'd never return. This warning makes Ventus act immediately, running to meet with his friend who instantly brushes him off and sets off on his mission set by Ericus. Not convinced that Terra will be okay, he too leaves the land of departure and follows after his friend. Now that Ventus has departed without Ericus' permission, he becomes alarmed that some foul plot is unfolding with Xehanort at its center, and turns to Aqua. He gives her two tasks, keep an eye on Terra and his dark impulses, and to retrieve Ventus and bring him home immediately. Aqua sets off as well, the three now having left the Land of Departure and beginning their adventures through a number of Disney-inspired worlds. They journey toward their own set goals, Terra seeking to control the darkness and prove his worth, Ventus looking to protect his friend, and Aqua carrying out her duties as a Keyblade Master and protecting those close to her, all while fending off the new threat plaguing the worlds. The gameplay of Birth by Sleep is played out through a system called the Command Deck. The way it works is you choose your abilities based on a menu that allows you to equip certain spells and attack actions, and this allows you to use them in battle. When in battle, once you use one of these actions, it'll play out and then go onto a load time rather than consume anything like magic points or ability points. You can also unlock new commands either by melding previous attacks together or obtaining them through the shop, treasure chests, or enemy drops throughout the game. It's a unique battle style, however, because of the way it's set up, it is also very easily abused. Because of the melding in this game, you're able to unlock new actions much earlier in the game than possibly intended, including passive abilities which you can unlock with the enemy drops known as crystals. Each different crystal adds a different passive effect to each meld and allows you the freedom to collect abilities quickly. This causes unbalance early on and makes the complex battle system become mindless and overall not worth exploring. On top of that, depending on the difficulty you play on, the iconic Keyblade that you use in this title is a glorified metal pole. Its damage is shadowed by the commands, and combos are next to useless unless accompanied by passive traits and a command style that changes up your attack pattern. Most of the time, you'll be using more commands than your Keyblade because of the lack of damage your weapon deals out, making your characters nothing more than over-glorified magicians, rather than the all-powerful Keyblade wielders they're meant to be. Birth by Sleep centers on three main characters, Terra, Ventus, and Aqua. All three of them are Keyblade wielders, who aspire to reach the title of Master and help better the world, but each of our characters struggles with their own set of problems throughout their journey. Terra is our brooding type, who struggles with his latent connection to the power of darkness. He works hard to push its influence back as he travels to many new worlds seeking to prove his worth to his Master. He holds true to a sense of right and will do what he feels is just. Ventus is our optimist. He seeks to bring happiness to those around him and protect those that matter to him. His emotions may be a bit unstable due to his age, but his heart is in the right place and it helps to push him forward in trying times. Aqua is almost like a mother to Terra and Ventus. 
She tries to be attentive and often finds herself cleaning up after the two on multiple occasions. However, she's also easily led by figures of power and rarely forms her own decisions. Kingdom Hearts is known for its well-made soundtracks, and Square owes thanks to Yoko Shimamura. In each installment, her talent shines brightly in each new piece, and Birth by Sleep is no exception. Because of the game's darker undertones and serious atmosphere, Yoko brought out a more melancholic composition, hitting the theme of the game right on the mark. A good example of the dark and almost heart-wrenching nature of these tracks would be Tears of Light. This song captures a sense of loneliness and sadness, and every time I hear it play, I can't help but fall in love with it over and over again. Even Ventus' theme, though having similarities to that of Roxas' theme from Kingdom Hearts 2, stands out and pushes that sense of desolation that runs heavy in this title. Though I hate to admit it, Birth by Sleep has many flaws about it that make the game a rushed mess that made its debut on the PSP far too early. Its story is very lackluster compared to the tale that it was meant to unveil. It starts off strong, with our character setting out to deal with an enemy that is threatening the worlds, but soon begins to lose its identity as it reveals a very convoluted plot that easily retcons much of Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. It also tries, and I heavily stress the word tries, to get us attached to the three main characters' relationship, and because of the shoddy writing or mistranslations, the bond between the three seemed almost fake at times and didn't engage the audience to feel for them as the story began to apply pressure. And even though Birth by Sleep was supposed to be the origin story of the Xehanort saga, it seemed like it didn't have enough to stand on its own and often relied on the player having been invested in the earlier titles to make sense of certain parts of the story. In the end, the story of Birth by Sleep is one of the biggest factors dragging this game through the mud. But that's not all. The characters are also to blame. In the beginning, we're introduced to our main characters and we're given a base idea of what their personalities are. That's fine for the most part. However, when telling a tale such as this one, it's expected that your characters will dramatically change. Or you would think they would, but for the majority of this game, I find that Aqua and Terra stay generally the same or even regress as the story goes on. Ventus, on the other hand, did show some signs of growth, but it was quickly buried underneath the misgivings of the other two characters. It also didn't help that the voice actors for Terra and Aqua in the English adaptation of Birth by Sleep were one of the worst to grace the Kingdom Hearts series. Usually when it comes to the series, the main characters often have experienced and well-versed actors behind them that portray emotions very well. Aqua's voice actor sounded disconnected and bored for the majority of Birth by Sleep, and when she did emote, it only served to contrast and prove how lackluster her delivery was. Terra, on the other hand, did emote, but when he did, it was either awkward or out of place, like he was having a conversation with himself, or didn't care about what was happening around him most of the time. It's a shame, really, because Ventus, Ericus, and Xehanort are very well voiced, but because of the clash between the good and the bad, it only dilutes the quality. Add in the boring and abusable battle system, the entire game looks rushed and unpolished. Moving along, it's time to talk about the pros and cons of Birth by Sleep. And if I had to talk about the pros of this title, it would probably be its amazing soundtrack and the good visuals. The cons, however, are the fact that it has a broken and boring battle system, flat character types with little to no growth, its uninspired story that detracts rather than builds and relies heavily on other titles, and its very lackluster voice acting. And as much as I want to sing praise for a Kingdom Hearts game, Birth by Sleep is not one to be pushing the title forward. Its awkward and plain story mixed with the clashing of good and bad voice actors and overall uninspired gameplay makes Birth by Sleep one of the saddest games I've played to date. I want to like this game, but there is so much more that it could have been if it had just had a bit more time in development. I think it could have been a great game, but unfortunately, we'll never know and this game will fade into obscurity. However, if you've never played a Kingdom Hearts game before and are willing to overlook Birth by Sleep's misgivings, do try out Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5 HD Remix. These come with the main title games in HD and Final Mix editions, which were only released in Japan until recently, and are definitely worth your time, especially Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. They are the best titles in the series and will definitely leave a better taste in your mouth than Birth by Sleep for sure. I promise. Hello everyone, I'm the Casa Puppy, and thanks for watching. If you liked my review, please like and subscribe to my channel. I upload a new review every other Tuesday, and if you have any suggestions of video games you'd like me to review, please leave a comment below and I will take it into great consideration.